Blog Talk Radio. It is Sunday, 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 the 3rd of September 2017, and school is officially in. See? Yeah, something froze. Wheel of Fortune game. <laughs> um, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Mitch, and I am joined by my ever, ever illustrious co-host, the um, excuse me, wow, the never indulgent aunt. What's up? Never indulgent. Never indulgent. What up? What up? And um, the extremely gratifying and satisfying Aaron. What's up? Hey, what's up, y'all? I try to be. Yeah. He's not. He's not really going to indulge you, though. <laughs> and Aaron is not here to indulge your shit. He just is not. Just so you know. Um. So today's show, um, is the pandering rapper slash culture vulture show. And apparently, um, this is the age of pandering and culture vulturing. Like never before, mm-hmm. so we just you know we feel like we needed to address those two things and the 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 line of demarcation between those two because there is one. So let's let's define pandering first. So pandering is to gratify or indulge an immoral or distasteful desire or need or a habit. Okay, or to indulge a person with such desires so pandering is basically appealing to someone's baser nature or their lower nature as we say low vibrating shit in order to kind of like a pimp yes in (laughs) order to get what you need to get for your own evil and dubious purposes (laughs) um now For the definition of culture vulture, we look to the Urban Dictionary just because a culture vulture is still someone who who loves art and music and movies and dance, any forms of art. However, the differentiation between the regular definition and the Urban Dictionary definition is the issue that we have in, in art and culture today is that most culture vultures really do not see a distinction between low art and high art. They approach low art and high art pretty much with the same same level. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they seem to confuse low high art, art. Like on our show, we talk about low art and high art you know, together and we, you know, laugh and chop it up about them. But we don't confuse the two. Like, we ain't confused about what the difference is between low art and high art. You know, but some people are. So, um, so let's start with pandering. Who are the largest, largest panderers out here? Past and present. Past and present. Right now, I gotta give it to Jay. You still get to Jay? Uh, yeah, I had some time to soak on 444 and give him his, <laughs> his background. That was going to be a that. question I asked, too. Was like, are we going to give Jay some redemption <clears throat> because of 444 now? I feel like because it's Jay, yeah. 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 Right. So you Everything feel like I 444 wanna... is not really enough to absolve him of his... I want to I wanna believe this is that album he owed us for the culture, but at the same time, I feel like he didn't have meant much choice with the direction he took it in, considering his age. You know, it's either stick to your um, usual guns, stick to your usual guns like other older rappers do, and then flop, 
or do what everybody's expecting you to do, which is what mm. he's done his whole career. That is a yeah. Good I don't. Point. I don't. I don't know. Be, I don't know because um, it seemed like uh, it seemed like um, people like Rick Ross and uh, you know, other people that's um, you know, like in their forties that's rapping. It seemed like they get by with that uh. Bye bye, you know, riding you know the same way. And you know what? Here's my gripe with that. My only gripe with that is no one ever had any expectations for him. For Rick? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Rick came out, he came out trying to go in every direction and stuck with what worked. He just, like, he came out pushing it. You know, like, he he, he came out Tony Montana and he, he's not really wavered from that. So, you know. I don't think yeah. anybody. Well, he, only, he one of the ones. He one of the ones I always look to. Um, as far as you know, being in that scene, because I a lot of times I often like group. I group rappers in a certain realm, like um, I think of people like Rick Ross because he followed the same uh, blueprint. When you think about it, like Jay did the same thing. Rick, well, Rick Ross did the same thing with um, you know um, his his, his artists in MMG. Mm-hmm. As Jay was, as Jay did with state property, like Jay, I feel like True. he used um, state property to stay relevant. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as like, because he was getting older and he didn't want to be that old dude, you know, that's um, that's still trying to keep itself relevant. So he he hid behind you know those particular artists that were younger. You know what I'm saying? That's and, um, true. I feel like- and, and and he did kind of phase himself. A, away from it a bit, not enough. Right at that time. Yeah. yeah. But, I Rick mean, Ross Rick Ross just came fast. out with trap, 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 trap. He happened like, way too fast for me. It's too much to take him for me. Like Rick Ross's last album had a song called Trap, 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 trap on it. So I'm gonna say there's been no growth, and like he's just a straight panderer. There's 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 nothing. But I've never seen anything that makes me think he's redeemable. Or that he would like it. I mean, part of his 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 actual life, like his life outside of music, it looks like he's doing things and making moves. Like his whole buy block, you know, buy black. Excuse me, buy back the block campaign, you know. But I mean, you you don't get to be Nino Brown and then you know pass some fucking turkeys out after you rape the hood and think it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's basically so, the I mean, It's basically that's what it is. I guess it is okay if Nino is your role model. No, that's that's some bullshit. <laughs> I'm like that one kid, and he's like, "Fuck Nino Brown, I hate his ass." Uh huh. <laughs> he up there on, on on a fucking third floor. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> but he still said you ain't hear that from me. Yep, Bob Brown He's like, "Get his ass, get him." I hate him. Hate him. I don't. I wouldn't say I per se hate. But I do hate what this shit represents. I just, you know, I just feel like we fucking just sank so damn low. And and people like Jay need to be held to task more because we do have greater expectations for him. I, but, I, really, I, want, mean, I really want Jay to step into that role that's out there. It's a role out there for Jay. Jay's like, uh, I think it was Nori said Jay is like the president of hip hop. But I mean, he's done... As you said, and what you expect, like, what you expect him to do when you think he should do it. He's never been a trendsetter. He's always been on trends. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So when, so back when I was in high school, you know, because I'm, because I'm, I'm not as old as Jay, but <laughs> um, <laughs> when Jay was, I mean, when we were in high school, when I was a sophomore, everybody was Afrocentric. So Jay was Afrocentric. True. You know, and then when everybody, you know, started rap like rapping like rapid fire, with that like real real like rapid fire flow, then Jay was like spitting all fast, like you know, like he was like common on a on a John. Yeah. And he says it. He says it. I was rapping like common sense. And I ain't rap like common sense. I still can't get over the fact like he told y'all that and nobody seems to mind. Nobody seems to mind. 
Well, well that's Aaron, because that I know. Up. Yeah, I know. I know exactly why people don't mind though, because that's the that's the narrative that you know they run with. You know, he basically saying, you know, why I go this way when I can get more money doing things this way, and people rock with that notion. Like people, you know, what I'm saying people feel that more when you say, oh, you know, what I'm saying like go this route and and chase that paper instead of going. Well, you know, know what I'm saying. If we were talking about anything other than hip hop, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I mean, See, because it's it's art, I mean because it's art and it's an issue. It it you you can't push the commerce well, in front of it. Art and, yeah, art. I'd say if we were talking about anything other than art, I want to say. I mean, I mean, I think I mean, you we, do shit for the love of of it, and then the money should come. I don't think you should ever chase money. And money, it, money should not be the main focus. It should never be the main focus, or you're, or you're not gonna get where you need to be if your focus is money. But that's how, that's how you know, uh, people that follow those type of artists, not even just Jay Z fans, but people that, that follow those type of artists with those mindsets, that's how they feel. <laughs> that's how they, you know, what I'm saying that. That's well, what they relate to Well, I mean, we're in the more. post, we're in the post commercial you know com- commercialism of hip hop mm-hmm. now so that like somebody like jay with that kind of message because then again all of a sudden when everybody was gambioso and you know in new york and, and then that's what jay became yeah i mean it it was very convenient that he was you know that he was doing that that he was actually doing what he was saying what do you guys think about um the documentary that we watched, um, The End of Malice. I actually haven't watched it yet. What? Yeah, I actually it haven't was, watched it yet. It was homework. I'm it sorry. Really was. I was, I was, yeah, I'm sorry. I was incapacitated. Well, you guys for know that um, <laughs> Ant is all on the show, not doing his homework. <laughs> not doing his homework. <laughs> I caught up on talking, what I could. Talking I about his dog eating and shit. I caught up, I caught up <laughs> on what I could. <laughs> I was recovering. So, Aaron, what did you think about it? Um, well, I, I recapped on it. I watched it again because I actually watched it before. But um, I did too. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. It was something about, like, I liked it, but it was something about it that just made me feel like, well, I don't know. It's kind of depressing. Miles was Aaron's <laughs> guy. Miles was Aaron's guy. Out of two. Yeah. Aaron, no, Aaron but no, I didn't, it didn't make me. It didn't make me dislike him. It just made me feel mm-hmm. some type of way about you know um, the about, state of hip hop. Yeah, the state of hip hop and just the, the state of society in general. Because like, mm-hmm. um, and I think I talked about this before when he was talking about um, how it made him feel some kind of way. How you know when they would get on stage, like it got to a point where they would get on stage and he noticed like. The fans more so than you know just coming to the show to enjoy a show um done by them like they were worshiping them and he said he felt some kind of way about that like you know yeah like y'all like y'all taking it to another level now like it's not just you know y'all enjoying um what we putting out like y'all taking everything that we say um it's like, like a gospel basically yeah you know what i'm saying and that's um, all well, he said that well i mean he said that at, at at one point in the documentary that he said we could he said I realized that it wasn't just music anymore. We could say whatever we wanted and everybody was just gonna follow like just right along with that. He said that shit made him so uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean that made that made perfect sense, you know what I'm saying? For a person with a damn soul. But you know it's people that don't yeah. care. Because people that you know they they so understand like, that that's how they they understand that that's what's happening and they don't they don't give a damn. I give Whitaker to his brother for that, by the way. Well, not just Whitaker to his to his brother, but like look at so Pharrell was sitting there and he was like you know he was like he was never really you know he was never really there. He said I could always tell that shit shit didn't rest well with with Gene because his name is Gene. Their names are Gene mm-hmm. and Terrence. Um, Thornton and so Gene, aka now no malice at the time was malice. Gene was, you know, he's I could always tell that shit just did not rest well with Gene's soul. It wasn't in him, and and eventually there was going to be some sort of crisis or a clash 
with who it was that he really was and the shit that he was saying, what was coming out of his mouth and what he was doing. And you can hear it early on in his music too, though. Like, you can. struggle with that. Even and, early and you young. know what? It's crazy as fuck that all that while everybody behind the scenes that they were working with were straight running a drug cartel. Did y'all see that part? Yeah, yeah, I heard, yeah. Like their manager, he got, what, 40 something years? Mm. For slanging dope. Their manager, their former manager. Yeah, this but that's not, that's crazy. not, that's not, that's not like a, a new thing in it's um, not, rap, though. Like it not, always, that always been a thing in hip hop. You know, it, a lot of people just don't, you know what I'm saying, don't talk about it because nobody wants yep. that to be their legacy. Mm-mm. They don't want you to know, you know, like that, like the, the whole like shaky murder ink shit that was happening. Like we ain't even gonna go there, but I mean, everybody's heard the rumors about how they wash money over there. Mm-hmm. You know, and that definitely wasn't the first or last time that that shit happened. Like back in the day with hip hop, it's easy to wash your money, you know, with hip hop. Right. That's a real but good you know, place to park it. You know, also what I was thinking about with that whole like you know um like influencing the fans thing. Mhm. Um, I was thinking about what we were talking about earlier. Um, about how like um people. It's getting to a point where I feel like we're not gonna have any live shows anymore, and um, that's that's kind of problematic because I feel like you know, like when you do like live shows, like what you were saying, like Master P talking about, you know, starting from the ground up and all of that, like you get some mm-hmm. type of intimacy with your fans, and you know they can they can relate to you as a real person. Like I feel like when yeah. you when you feel like you know you're getting that separated from the fans where they where they worshiping you. More so than appreciating um your art mm-hmm. as a fan. I, I don't know. Um, that's, I don't know. That's, that's that's your oppo- that's that's your opportunity to talk. You know what I'm saying? That's your opportunity to talk to um people and you know explain to them the the difference a lot of times, especially when you're in your infancy of your career. True. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know that the live shows are going away. Like I'm using logic as an example i keep hearing people talk about how he's changing the live show as it is like he like joe button was talking about this nigga sitting up there helming um somebody else was up there playing games or whatever playing uh-huh. video games at the show. but they made like a whole production of it i mean i've seen a lot of people you know go, having these crazy live shows i think and then triple x is another one who's changing like the live show he's so, like, def- no, go, that like, might be a little shit. scary and they go to throw shit at him too right yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, but you gotta remember with that punk, with with, with that half punk aesthetic he has going on. That's yeah. the, kind of the aesthetic that you would see at punk rock. At that show, right, right. Kind of concert. So he's kind of drawing that in with the kind of music that he's making. But back to the whole, to the to the aspect of um of um like being able to get anybody to do whatever you want like like That's how we ridiculous. talk about somebody like future where part of the issue with pandering is you're not partaking in this dumb shit yourself just like jay-z right. jay-z was never he's like i'm not partaking in this shit i'm going to, i'm going to sell it out to you like future i'm not going to take these drugs but I'm gonna talk about him. Like I almost have more respect for somebody like Lil Wayne, who actually fucking doing the drugs. <laughs> almost. <laughs> that crazy. But I mean, and at the same time, even there was a, a meme circulating a while back about Jeezy, Jeezy, Jeezy with his um his son graduating from uh, high school, getting ready to go to college. Yeah, uh, people I saw are that. His music, like his music, is talking about like schools whack and all that other dumb shit. But he's telling his kid to go and be all you can be. Because. These idiots out here that are following these sons of bitches. <laughs> right. They don't understand the same... these MFers are not living this, you know, what they're telling you that they're living. Like, look at 21 Savage. Mm-hmm. That's part of the reason why everybody was like, how you all boo loving with Amber Rose? You be like, fuck these hoes, fuck these bitches. And now all of a sudden, he over in the corner, like, hey, baby, give me this avocado mm-hmm. mud mask. <laughs> 
<laughs> as an Ali. You had, but you saw the fucking, um, beautiful Dean footage. They yeah. was rolling that shit all over social media, like, and he was, like, sitting there, she was giving him a facial. But is that even new with rappers, though? It's not. Is that new with rap? That ain't new with rap. But like half I, of, if, if niggas was doing half of the shit they was talking about doing on record, they'd be in jail somewhere. But I feel like back in the day, when we had more fucking sense in our head, it was almost understood right. that you just didn't do that shit yourself. Right. No matter right. what somebody else was doing it. It was it was looked at as what it was in our minds. It was entertainment. DMX did not have to tell us that he did not really get killed in a shootout with the ATF. Hello. <laughs> no, he didn't really die. And how else would he record the song, dummy? <laughs> like you know where I feel. You know where I feel like um it, it started taking that type of mentality started taking off effect and um I know a lot of people probably wouldn't agree. NWA. No, I wholeheartedly agree. The reality <laughs> rap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause like, and the reason I say that is because like if you. Um, if you ever notice, especially like when you watch like um like their like I watch a lot of um the um the history and older interviews and stuff like before mm-hmm. that movie came out. But like it was it always seemed like the same thing. Like it seemed like once they realized, you know, oh, we can say bitch, we can say motherfucker. Like and it was like it, it was like damn, they love that shit. Let's do some more. Like it was that type of it was yeah. that type of thing. After and it really was like like when we were watching the defiant ones and then dre started telling that dumbass paintball story that kind of that kind of cheapened fuck the police for me it didn't kind of cheapen it it completely undermined it yeah he should have kept that story to himself he should have stuck with the movie version of the story and that's my point is that everything with that whole genre like aaron saying has a movie version i'm doing my i'm doing my um my air my cold. um my, my air cold hands. <laughs> it has a movie version and a real version. And I feel like like back in the day, once again, we understood that that shit was just entertainment. The part where that shit started to cross over, Aaron, and this is why I keep going back to this shit. Diggy and Tupac. Mm. Cause that's cause that shit became real life. And at that point, there was no going back. Yeah, that's to, that. Yeah, that was a shock to, to the Yeah, like there was no going back to. Oh, this shit is just a bunch of entertainment. No, they were out in the street shooting each other. Like, it wasn't just entertainment. It it was real at that point. And it never went back. It just it just kept getting worse and worse from that point. And now we got Drake and Diddy fighting in the club with bottles, throwing bottles at each other. Um, that was, there's so many fucking rumors about what that shit is really about, too. <laughs> Drake asked for autographs in a picture. Some folks kept saying picture. it was that Drake sold a, be- a beat that he wanted to rhyme over. Some people said it was over a woman. I believe the woman part. You think so? No one Drake. No one Drake. That is, yeah. Not because Drake is Captain Still Your Girl. I don't know about that, Drake. Drake and then, and then give her the back to you. Drake's the middle house of the game. He's still your girl to take her shopping or comment on her nails or something. Oh, like that. he will definitely dick your girl down. And I, then I don't, I don't know if I believe that. And then that. give her back. I don't know yeah. if I believe that. Here you go. Like, look at the whole J Lo thing. Look at the whole J Lo thing. Like J Lo wanted a booty call. Drake wanted a relationship. See, Aaron, he keeps using that one. <laughs> that's, I know. That's, that's, like the only, that's, all, that's the only. That's the only example. That's the only one. That's it. All the rest of them are a bunch of strippers that he keeps dicking down and kicking out. I mean, who are you gonna believe? A, a stripper or a Drake? A bunch of strippers. <laughs> they don't got the just, outlet. They no, ain't got the outlet. Had, there's too many of them, and there's like a string of them at this point. I mean, all, all, all these strippers not gonna be wrong though. If I was a like, stripper, I'd never mind. <laughs> look, I'm saying I'm not even gonna say that. Paul, his, his handlers, you know, take these women out that he wants, that he finds. They bring them to him. 
he dicks him down for you know Does allegedly. He really? Does he? Really? You know, for, I think so. I yeah. think he. I don't know. He one of them customers is paying for cuddles. I don't. I don't know. I mean, he's probably spending like you know trips. As Aaron would say, trips. Trips is the thing now. <laughs> He's taking these hoes to get cheddar taking, biscuits. Taking them on trips. Hey, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, well, speaking of, speaking of um uh, people who didn't or who did pander, Jay Z will always say, "I ain't taking these chicks on trips." You know, work with them little Debbies. Uh. You know. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, over there. <laughs> But I mean, on the back end, from what I understand and what I hear, Jay was doing that though. He like the ones that he really liked. But he's also Jay is also enamored with his favorite rappers' girls. Like he smashed a lot of people, like right, like Nas, Kooji rap. Like he, like he. I don't know what it was with him and that shit, but he, he's like, oh okay. It was a hobby. Or something, some kind of eye <laughs> <after> like why? <laughs> Why I'm with I'm with rap critic now. Like why is that the thing? Like you just gotta you know what I'm saying, knock off somebody else girl, like competition. It, it, that shit is weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. That shit is weird. I don't understand. And because it goes on, it's like, well, oh, let's you know, everybody's like looking at you, watching you. That's what everybody does. It's like let's do what they do out here in these streets. I'm gonna do everything these rappers do. So, um, <coughs> Who else is out here pandering horribly, Aaron? Um, I want to say Snoop Dogg. I listened to that last album. That shit is like <laughs> ridiculous. What's wrong? I don't know. It's just it's just all over the place. It's like what I talked about before. Like how you got rappers that always like you know, I got something for the streets, something for the ladies, something for the clubs. Like it's always like. <laughs> I don't know. And he's too old to be acting like that too, so it made me mad. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't actually heard the whole thing yet, but he's Snoop does, you know, he he does kind of. But I mean, is that is that Snoop's personality though? Is that still Snoop? Is that who he is? I don't know. That's the that's the problem. It's like I don't even know anymore. <laughs> like certain I actually people just want to like, shout out some of these people who are kind of who've gotten tired of that shit like like within themselves and they're like I get the sense watching Dre and Defiant ones that he's truly disgusted with the shit that he's done like mm. over the years like he he like he almost seems just disconnected from it in a way like you know like right. like, a, like like a large part of it he was just like turning his nose up at like I can't believe I fucking did this stupid shit. Like when they yeah. were talking you know about it. You know what's funny? Cause when we started talking about like the whole um the whole fan situation and um mm-hmm. and the, and them just idolizing the artist, I was thinking of um I was thinking about Eminem and um why he made uh Stan and I feel like that's one of the bigger reasons why he made Stan cuz you know he wanted to talk to the um talk to his fans from that point of view. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Oh, it, it, that's how strong I always really like. But you know what though? Ironically the shit what? went the other way. It made folks Stan harder. <laughs> yeah, ain't that crazy? Like right? Like, you didn't really get the point of this, but it's like, stop standing so hard, people. But no, let's stand some more. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on, especially with his, man, his fans are ridiculous. Fan base, yeah. Whose fans? Yeah. Eminem, your favorite. Oh, oh, great. No, I don't even do that. Somebody might not know you joking. Marshall Mathers. Don't even do that. Well, we were just talking about how um how he made Sam, which is like supposed you know supposed to show his fans like look how stupid all of this you know stand culture is, and what it wound up doing is making his fans stand harder on him. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, the exact God. opposite. <laughs> yeah. The exact opposite. Them fans are the hardest fans to talk to. Lord, aren't they? 
Jesus Christ. You can't have a conversation with them. Nah. As soon as they say Eminem, say, uh, I see what I'm getting into. You're like, yeah, you're like, all right, I think we might be done here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's easier to talk to like Juggalo fans sometimes than it is to talk to Eminem it's fans. You can talk to almost anybody else's fans. Even Jay fans. Even if you talk about Jay versus Nas, you know, I'll get more progress out of that conversation. Uh, unless you're talking to somebody who's having a conversation like that. Because, like, when me and Aaron are watching that shit on Vlad, which is a good segue because they're getting ready to talk about his crazy ass, we were watching. Fucking Memphis Bleak talk about Vlad. Remember that, Aaron? That shit was hilarious. And we were like, really? That shit's hilarious. Really? He's like, even if he fucking was better, I wouldn't tell you. Like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and then proceeds to lie through his teeth. But we don't know if he's lying or not because he's not going to tell you if he's lying. I assume he was. So, so Memphis Bleak was on Vlad. So, um, so that's first period, um, right there, and we've now gone into out to lunch on you. Um, so I feel like this out to lunch has been weeks in the making. <laughs> this it's this been has been a long years time coming. In the making Vlad we, is. We just- we're not even going to get in the freebie line for lunch today. We're going to the paid side. I can't even do this. <laughs> this Vlad. <is> premium. <laughs> Vladimir. What's his last name again? Uh, I can't even begin to pronounce that. Start with an L. <laughs> it's Vlad. Let's you, start with you an L. Me. You both me. You can't spell it without L. <laughs> Luke, Vladimir Luke, 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 uh, me. This shit is hilarious. So Damn, even the phonetic is impossible. Shit. So so fucking Memphis Bleak is talking shit about how even if he feels like Nas won the battle between him and Jay, he's you'll never, never gonna tell you. You'll never hear him admit that. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't even think Vlad called him out on it either. No. Nah. No, nah, maybe off camera. So See, Vlad's Vlad good at setting people man. up for those hot seats. Yes, he does. It's like he's, it's like a bunch of dominoes. He sets you up and he lets you knock that shit down. Uh-huh. It's always uh-huh. some ridiculous shit. But shout out to people like Lord Jamar who call his ass and culture vulture to his fucking face. To his like, face. On every <laughs> episode that he's on, he's like, "Well, you know what, Vlad? You're a culture vulture. <laughs> That's why and you're then, a culture vulture." But see, like he said that, but they started joking about it, like he already knew. Yeah, but see, it, it, that's the problem. Everybody thinks that, that shit is funny. It's not funny. Especially on that one when he had uh, Andrew Schultz on there, two culture vultures joking about their vulturism. Oh. Trying to justify the shit, talking you about. Know what? But what about Wu Tang Clan? Oh my up. God, that conversation made me want to pimp slap both of them. Both of them, both of them at the same time. What stand about Wu Tang Clan? Stand next to each other so I can get y'all both with the same swipe. <laughs> Two pimp slaps in what? <laughs> I straight up was grappling with that. Like, is Andrew Schultz gonna be it or is Black? Because <laughs> Schultz, uh, Schultz is problematic. Hey, I understand he's a comedian, and half the shit you gotta—he say you gotta take with a grain of salt. Yeah, but I mean, he still needs to be checked. Yeah. Hey, Aaron, where you at, Aaron? <laughs> Back from break. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, what happened? So, um, I'm like, but I, all I know is I'm tired of, I'm tired of his brand of just irresponsibility with the culture. Very irresponsible. Kind of, I'm kind of disappointed that his platform was the first one having visited after Prodigy passed. I mean, his platform is huge. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like we need to big up Doggy Diamond. Everybody blood Doggy Diamond. 
So, so we can get the good people to be on a more consistent show, a show that is going to support the culture a lot better than somebody like like Vlad. I, I, like, I, I want to see Hip Hop BX, the guy from Hip Hop BX, do more uh, interviews. Yeah. He seems to be straightforward, straightforward with good points, even though I don't always agree with his points. You know what? There isn't anything wrong with Drunk Chance. I love Drake Chance. I'd rather watch Drink Chance. But Nori, 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 <laughs> Nori got calmed down with the alcohol a little bit sometimes. <laughs> like, I feel like, I kind of feel like he was kind of rubbing Bun B the wrong way. Aaron's back. Yay! Yo, what's up? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, what I don't know happens? either. It, yeah, yeah, shit does happen. So, so we're talking about how we would rather watch, um, how we would rather watch drink, drink Pep than watch Vlad the Impaler impale the shit yeah. out of the culture. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know I was. I didn't know I was um out of the conversation. But I was saying before um I got cut off that um uh, that um Vlad Vlad scribed to that BS too. I don't know if he believes what he's saying. I think he does. I think he thinks it's good for TV. But that's, again, part of the issue. This is the culture that you're sitting here raping. That's what makes him dangerous. Because he, he he's articulate enough to sound like he's right. And the people that are watching aren't, aren't necessarily the type that go back and research that shit. And they have no clue that he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Right. And that he is not of the culture. Talking right. that stupid shit. Yeah. But it, again, you know what it is? It's just like it's this social media age we living in too. Cause like um, I was um, I forget what I was watching. What the hell was I watching? Anyway, they were talking about like um how on Twitter, mm. like pe- people just scribe to whatever makes them feel comfortable. Right. And and yeah. like a lot of times that's what happens when you got people like Vlad and you know the Roman millennial who we talked about before. Fuck that and person. they say oh, stuff dude. they say stuff a lot of times that make other people, you know, certain people feel feel comfortable in their argument to be like, Oh, well yeah, that makes me feel comfortable when I hear them say that. So I'ma run I'ma run with the same argument, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Next time I get into um that, that particular conversation. And that's, that's not that's not, not good. That's why I dig um, R.A. the Rugged Man on social media because he don't give a fuck. Yeah, I like that. He don't give not one single solitary fuck. I don't think he's ever given a fuck about anything in his life besides Well, that's kid. what, I mean, that's what we do on our show. And, you know, we've been told recently that we go a little too hard. And Somebody's got to do it. And somebody has to do it. And we just say, basically, fuck your uninformed opinion. That is our stance on this show. Fuck your uninformed opinion. Stop yeah. walking around spreading your illegitimate, <laughs> <laughs> unresearched, uninformed, uninformed jizz all over the game. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly. In, that's exactly. All up in Molly's, <laughs> all up in Molly's eye, like fuck you. Hey yo. I was like, all up in Ethan's eye, like fuck you. I am not a whore. I'm not a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Why was that so appropriate? <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, hip hop is not your whore. Stop jizzing in my face with your ridiculous nonsense. Uh, okay. And it's go, like everybody doing it. Go read a book. Go read a book. It's, it's oh, not God. just it's not just hip hop that's being raped over. I know. I mean, I know we talking about Vlad particularly in this conversation, yeah. but like, it's not just hip hop. Like, it's everything. Like, I was on um. I was looking at um this Twitter feed and like they were it was like these Trump supporters talking about how Obama uh wasn't oh how how are we gonna criticize Trump for not being there for Texas but Obama wasn't there for Hurricane Katrina in the president. Even in office he yet. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like we know this, but like it was people up there like, yeah, tell them, tell them about this. It's a lot of them. It's and, I quote, and, I quote, and I quote, and I quote, on the telethon as I sat there, which I never watched, Kanye, standing next to Mike Myers, <laughs> saying George Bush doesn't care about black people. 
Right. <laughs> Mike Myers turned George COVID. George Bush was the fucking uh, president. You got me. George Shout W. To Chris Tucker. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Tucker for the cleanup. <laughs> George W. <laughs> Like, Damn. fuck your false narrative, and then a bunch of support of your false fucking narrative. What are these, like, yeah. these people were in kindergarten when the shit happened or something? Like, Apparently. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I think that's the part that bothered me. That bo- I think that's the part that bothered all of us more. So it's the people that follow behind that bullshit, you know. They're all the same people that was at Charlottesville with their tiki torches. Don't even know how to mob right. I can't. Like is, like Vlad. Is, is like there a Vlad. way to mob right, Anthony? <laughs> they don't even like, know how to mob right. How the fuck you go to Walmart and buy a thousand tiki torches? The fuck y'all planning? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, just like Vlad keep on um trying to talk shit about oh Nas, Nas is a horrible beat picker. Like, what the hell does that even mean? Vlad picks topics that he knows people are gonna be pissed off about, and I'm gonna click the video to listen. But to a lot to of people that. are always on this whole Nas, Nas's beats are trash. They, they've been doing that for years. We always talk about that. Again, I'm not that focused on. His beats. I'm more focused I don't listen on what to a Nas, Nas album to listen to his beats. Exactly. I want to hear what he has to say. Right, and not just not just that, but like um um, we was um talking. I think we talked about this on the show before too. But um, on the way on the way back home, um, driving, I was in the car riding with my brother, and um, we was talking about how if you ever listen to Nas, like he always, no matter what he do on albums. He always go back to those break beats that everybody hates. Yes. Always. He always find a way to go back to that. Whereas though, like Jay Z, don't really do that. Jay Z has never hip-hop. really done that, except Not for this last hip-hop. album where, like we said, he was pandering anyway. So. Ooh. Oh. I think if Jay puts out, if he puts out fired. another album, if he puts out another album and it's along the same no, lane, no, Aaron just Aaron just said that he's pandering with this shit too. I think that's he a is. Bold, that's a bold ass statement, y'all. Well, I'm and just... I like it. It's provocative. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like him and the one who should not be named are both doing it. Oh, it's a concerted effort. <laughs> it's a concerted effort. Well, you already know he's gonna do it. He's El Diablo. That's, that's a whole nother. Well, the other one who should not be named. The female who? one. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, let's talk about them cranes in the sky. Um, so, so how about that for mine? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that was just dope. I got that on vinyl, by the way. That's your own dope. That's, that's probably something banging on vinyl. Yeah. That's probably something banging on vinyl. I feel like I need to follow in your footsteps now. I was just in um I was in Target looking at record players the other day. I don't know what it's I got start. a nice one. I got a pretty decent one. I like it. I don't know where to start. I think I want like an old school sonograph or some shit. I leave with the um, what is a phonograph, wrong. a phonograph, looking, I mean. A phonograph. This, this fool was gonna be walking around looking for Victrolas in this fucking flea market. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know where um, to start. I'm going to sir, the can I please see something in a Vic in a Victrola? <laughs> You're gonna be like, look like, what the fuck get out of here? Why check you eBay, here? bro, check <laughs> eBay. Check <laughs> eBay. <laughs> He wants this shit with the big ass bell on it. The <laughs> joint with the crank on the side, y'all. You know I mean? <laughs> hey, yo. Uh, oh, hell no. That's fucking funny as so, hell. Yeah, you know. <laughs> that shit look good in the studio. No, nah, but um, I need. I need somebody else besides Vlad to stop being the like the biggest proprietor. Of the culture right now. I need more of his guests to call him out on his shit. Well, as you said, Anthony, like some of the other news outlets, everybody's in the same vein now. Complex, they're all like yeah. this. Yeah, I never trusted Complex anyway. I'm trying to figure out why he got like you know um, so many takers though, because like um, it's people that I've seen on his show that you know I got mad respect for that I just yeah. wouldn't assume would, would I, be on his show. I actually I commented on that before. I said, like, if you look at, like, his guests and the things they be talking about, a lot of them seem like bitter old rappers. You know what? That's been commented mm. on before. Is that the, that that's 
if that's um, an issue. But it's not like if you really listen to them, like if you listen to Cool G Raps and we talked about this uh-huh. before, well, like he was making actual points. It wasn't just that's being good. better. That's a good point. I was going to say, it, especially his older interviews, though. His older interviews, they seem like the bitterer, the bitterer bunch. Like re- more recently, because his platform is growing or whatever, you get legitimate stories. Like back in the day, I would watch Vlad and feel like I had to fact check that story that the person just gave. Yeah, yeah. Whereas listening to G Rap talk, I don't feel, I don't get that feeling. Listening to Lord well, Jamar talk, I don't get, the, I don't get that feeling. Oh, well, Lord Jamar is the issue. Lord Jamar needs his yeah. own show. He really but does. you know, you know what I think it is too, though, Ant, because. You got people like G Rap that like, and we talked about this before. How certain artists that we listen to, they don't get like the um, like major platform. Like you won't see like how often you think you want to see somebody like G Rap on the Breakfast Club. Not nah. true. You know what I'm saying? So um, they barely even mention it. Right. So you know, like Vlad is like you know that at the bottom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He like he like that guy that, you know, almost anybody can get to. He's you know, like good enough. He's good enough for them to get some exposure right. but at the same time. And around yeah. And you gotta remember around yeah. the time uh G Rat was promoting an album too that just came out. Yeah. That's true. And then and, and that is true, Aaron. That's part of the issue is that that a lot of people who wouldn't mm, otherwise not really get the exposure can come on to his platform and and people will be tuning in and watching that shit and really be you know listening to what people have to say too mm-hmm. it's not just like, even when these dudes do they, they press runs and you see them on hot 970 you see them on the breakfast club yep. you see them with angie martinez like you don't see yeah. them on black they don't they don't nah. stop by black it depends on who it is because havoc did that and he was on black and then he stopped there first Mm. From what I saw, yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, every once in a while you'll see some crossover, but not, but you're not gonna see a lot of it. And uh, again, like I said, like okay, for instance, I saw Cole Wayne Seven was on Vlad. He was also on Sway. Him and yeah. Layla were on Sway. Yeah, like, I forgot to mention Sway. My bad. I'm sorry. I mean, Sway. you will see them. You know, sometimes make the rounds depending on who who they are and what it is that they're promoting and, and what they are. But a lot of times you're right. It's like you won't see them sit down with Charlemagne the God or, but I mean, that's part of, part of that's their fault. Like, true. Cause I mean, segueing into culture vulture, sometimes Charlemagne the God himself is a fucking culture vulture too. Uh, yeah. Get his shit I feel yeah. like Charlemagne 21 is Savage is a fucking sonically pleasing shit. That I feel is, like he's genuine yeah. with his quest for growth, but he ain't quite there yet. I feel like yeah, he but genuinely see, does not know the difference between high and low culture saying some dumb ass shit like that. But no, I feel learn, like I feel like know um, Charlemagne. I feel like Charlemagne fall into that group we were talking about before, like how you got those um those older people that know better but they don't want to fall into the category of bitter old old hate. Yeah, I don't want to be that hating ass old head. You know what I'm saying? Let the kids enjoy themselves. But it's not about just letting the kids enjoy themselves. The kids are destroying themselves right now. (laughs) Exactly. But, you know, they're not looking at it like that. And I think I said that before about Busta Rhymes. He was one of them talking that nonsense, too. Well, a lot of them don't see the bigger picture. And I don't know why they're not looking at it. Like, okay, so I was going back. Also, um, we're back from... um, we're back from from lunch, and I was talking about this to somebody the other day. I was listening to Outcast, some early Outcast records, and they were talking about the content that gets put out there and what people put out there. And then I listened to a Big Boy record, his new record, Boom um, Boomiverse. And he mm-hmm. was talking about how the South basically um, has something to say and you can't get your ball back. And I'm like, the fuck y'all saying right now, it ain't shit. You're not saying shit <laughs> at this point. Like, they were saying some shit when the outcast was popping. Times have changed. But, I mean, they were saying plenty and they were calling people out when they weren't saying shit. 
and now all of a sudden just because you're you're part of the map is is repping hard even though that the, it's just insane amounts of garbage and somebody from your own camp indirectly future is spewing hot garbage and he's you know to me he's both he's 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 a, a he's a vulture and a panderer mm. who future oh uh, yeah but I mean mm-hmm. like how can you how can you now say that like that's like you used to stand for something and now all of a sudden just because it's your part of the you know part of the country that's repping the hardest all of a sudden it's, it's all good like we watched that stupid documentary where Future was talking about you know you sell out any and everybody you have to to get money like that that isn't anything you would have ever heard outcast say ever right yeah that's that's kind of that's kind of messed up it's kind of mess, messed up because like um it's a lot of people that feel that way though that's sick though and it seems to be more and more every day that's just is, is that's that's a bunch of fucking psychosis that's that can't that it's just it's wrong it's wrong and i mean you should be able to tell the difference between someone who's doing like like i was telling aaron a, a, um, a few days ago, Big Boy does wrong right. <laughs> I saw that. You know, yeah. You know, because he he's he's not always, you know, Big Boy is like one of the biggest, biggest, <laughs> biggest knuckleheads sometimes. Because <laughs> every song he has, he's talking about how he got his dick in your mouth. Every fucking song. <laughs> I would like I, I need somebody to find a song where he doesn't put his dick in somebody's mouth. Now, 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 that's a little exact. No, it is not exaggerated. <laughs> Listen to every verse Big Boy has ever in like ninety percent of those verses, he is putting his dick in someone's mouth. I tr- and, and that's the challenge. I, I, I'm gonna fucking call that shit the Big Boy Dick and Mouth Challenge. Go listen that's like to the Big Boy lyrics. <laughs> That's like his. That's like his tag or something to let you know yeah. I wrote this shit. <laughs> yeah, that's the shit. That boy's good. Like, that boy's good. By the, by the way, my dick's all in your mom's mouth. By the way, my dick's all in your girl's mouth. Like there are countless big boy verses where his dick is in your girl's mouth. I want to say tremendous damage, but now I gotta go back and listen to it first. <laughs> ah, I don't know. There might be a dick in the mouth line there. I don't know. It's but, probably, I don't think it's one. Is it one on B still? I don't think it's one on B still. They don't sound appropriate for a song like B still. <laughs> I think I think B still might be one. Of, you know, because you got because you got fucking uh, what's the name singing like crooning in the background too. Like uh, Janelle is was, Janelle Monae is giving you her little. You know. Yeah, he had to I he mean, had to he had to switch up. He had to switch right. it up because she was there. But pretty much every every other shit. <laughs> well, that last album, though, that that's the same. John with some in his damage. He's just like in a different area with that job. Yeah. So, but know, I mean he he still he 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 does that. But then he also gives you gems. He talks about he still talks about how you ain't living right. Bars. He's, you know, he he still got bars for you. It's not a low it, it's 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 wrong done right. It's not uh-huh. low vibrating, even though it's fuckery. <laughs> <laughs> It's well big thought out. Always got me. Big boy always got mad fuckery for you. It's just he. It's just how he does it. And I think that's why Andre always fucked with him because Andre, after a while, Andre wasn't making shit like that anymore. Yeah. And didn't want to. You know. Yeah, I, I be telling people, you know, big boy's just as out there as Andre is, just in a different direction. It's a way to do wrong right. It really mm. is. You know, yeah. and and if you do wrong right, I think that was the saving grace of like '90s rap too, because it was a whole bunch of wrong done right. So it wasn't a culture. A whole culture. bunch of wrong. No. A whole bunch of wrong. But it but it was still it was done with like really well written lyrics. 
was like mm-hmm. so much of what Wu Tang did was was wrong. Very wrong. <laughs> but it's for the kids. It's for the kids. Sure. <laughs> 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 There, I mean, there's tons of things like you guys and your love of DMX. DMX has said shit that's way, way wrong. Very wrong. Yep, I should not have been listening to DMX as a kid. But I mean, I again, know. it's done I right. Would, it's, it's done would, right. Wouldn't be me if I didn't. You know, Biggie and Tupac again. You know, Biggie was so wrong. He was dead mm-hmm. wrong. <laughs> dead wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So big, like, you did, bro. Like a lot. He had it going I was thinking, on. I was, I was actually thinking about, I was thinking about uh, Biggie when we was um, like all um, listening to that XXX Temptation dude, and um, thinking about how you know that type of uh, suicidal mentality is what he's thinking in hip hop mm-hmm. and how he was one of those actually touched. See, I feel like. I feel like that's something else that's 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 wrong done right. I think that, that that's what I was picking up on with XXX Tentacion. I blanked out on a large part. I, it was over before I realized it. I'm, I, I fell I asleep was, and started having a nightmare. So I think I was, I'm, it, thankfully I was at the bus stop waiting. You know, I was at the bus stop getting paranoid and all that. So you know, I kind of zoned out a little bit. Well, I mean, you kind of figure where XXX was going with his shit when he was on um, the cipher. Yeah, and I don't remember a whole lot of words. There weren't a whole lot of words on that. Um, album. there were words about him about to, you know, to kill everybody because it was anarchy and shit. You know, like that. It, it happened. Yeah, I guess. It really? Happened. Really? Does it happen? It happens these days. That's what everybody seems to be on. Like, that's the vibe of the day. It's depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. I don't even think these count as regular suicidal thoughts. They like homicidal thoughts aimed at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's suicidal, right? <laughs> that's a little, that's a step beyond suicidal. How, uh, like how so? Because like, suicidal is like myself. It's like I'm seeking an end to the pain. It's like no, nah, motherfucker, you got to die. That oh shit is hell good. no! Like yeah. you are crazy. You happen to be me, and I am not going to mutilate you. <laughs> <laughs> that's normally what people draw the line, but that's not what I'm getting from the book. I get. Uh, what you? Uh, we talking right. about the difference between suicidal and self homicidal thoughts. <laughs> and he is trying to actually make a case for that for something called self homicidal. Well, that's a step beyond. That's a step beyond <laughs> suicidal. And like, what the fuck? That's a step beyond suicidal. He said self. He says self homicidal is different than just suicidal. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's true. It's true. And, and here's the thing, I fucking understand that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes it true, like, for real, think about it, think about it. I actually get it, it's like, when you're suicidal, you just kind of want to get it over, I'm just going to kill myself and get out of here. Uh-huh. When you are self-homicidal, you want to inflict the most pain upon yourself. <laughs> possible while you are killing yourself. <laughs> like, it's not just a, a peaceful end to it. It's like, no. Nah, it's like, it's I hate you, motherfucker. I hate you. You must die. It's a whole experience. Me. You must understand my wrath fully. Yeah, that's and not you, healthy at you all. you are me, just so you know. You are uh-huh. me. That's not healthy at all. So you so you saying we got more albums to come from him that sound like that? I certainly hope not. Yeah. I hope this young man seeks help. I hope this young man seeks help. Why would you think otherwise? Why would you think anything other than that is gonna happen? I don't think. I'm being very optimistic. I Do feel like think- putting the album out uh, putting the album out like that is the first step. Well, Do you maybe the think that, that because that that is the thing that people are doing now that that's part of why everybody is suddenly on pills and and this like is is that are they culture vulturing are they pandering or, or are they really having these issues? Well, the I think the listeners, yeah, are really having these issues. But, but I mean, what about the but, people making the music? I think some of them really uh, are having a, a portion of them. I wouldn't say all of them. No, nah, like I was, I was listening to that. Um, did y'all see that? Um, 
that uh, uh, everyday struggle with Joe Burton was talking about like mental health and all of that. Yeah. When yeah. they played the Styles clip, I keep seeing the Styles clip all over the place. Why is everybody surprised about this? I've been telling y'all since episode one. <laughs> right. Like I mean, we believe yeah, we... you now. You need no more people. You need no more people. Everybody. I mean. Needs to know. I mean, like, um, when he was talking about that, like, it was a few people that came to mind, and around the time, um, when he said that, um, I hate to keep bringing his name up, because I don't really mess with the boy, but, uh, 21 Savage, mm. like, um, he was one of the people that came to mind, um, because, as far as, like, you know, other artists that's dealing with it, that people don't talk about, um, him, uh, Chris Brown, you know, because I had just got done, I had just got done listening, I think I told y'all I was listening to the, um, 21 Savage album and it's it's horrible but <laughs> yeah um you can definitely you can definitely hear like it's something going on there you know what I'm saying it's like, like you with, know. with everybody you picking up on these like they putting it out there they all but it's a deeper issue in the community as a whole too mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so of course you know you're gonna have a handful of artists that's going through it because they still people they just people yeah. yeah yeah and and what's crazy is like and, and the funny thing about it is that like you still got people that ascribe to this whole idea that you know well if i just get to the money then you know everything gonna be all good but you seeing and people see, that's that, the problem and that's, that have, that's my biggest issue with that yeah yeah you yeah. seeing people that that have money that's you know what i'm saying supposed it's to not be gonna living. do anything for you it's yeah. not gonna do anything for you if they you supp- have supp- no purpose if you have if, if you're hollow and you have no soul I don't care how much money you go after. It's never going to put you in the place that you need to be to feel whole or to have peace. If anything, it's just going to give you easier access to self-destructive tools. Yes, and then you're going to be so homicidal. Yeah. (laughs) Nice, nice, nice way to round that out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's why I, um, I appreciated the fact that, um, Joe Button kind of called um, Yachty out on that bullshit too because he was up there on the show one day talking about some well you know I'm happy I'm good because you know and, I don't have to go to, and Joe Button was basically like so you're happy all the time and he was like yeah and he was like that's bullshit that's bullshit mm-hmm. and I, you know what I'm saying I'm not going to yeah. sit here and listen to that that's bullshit that was that here. episode that everybody got up in arms over too by the way when he would tap Lil Yachty about that shit Right, but a lot of people would sit there and say to Joe Button, "Well, you just you can't sit there and tell somebody that they're not happy just because like you're you know, an angry old man." Because that was that's, the response. That's just not humanly possible to be happy all the time. All the time, exactly. It's not humanly possible. It's not, but I feel like even though, because I was talking about this last week, we're 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 acting like the tone of this music doesn't mean anything and I remember again me teaching y'all about tone and mood work of art works of art have a tone the tone to their music now there's nothing happy go lucky about any of it like even though we were going through shit we were going through tons of shit Back in the day, the tone of our music was never this angry, mm-hmm. hard, this depressed. Like even little Yachty songs don't, they have a nasty undertone. Right. Even as, as happy as you say you are, it's, it's not. But my, you know what my issue is with the tone of the music like you talk about? My issue with it is that it don't even feel real. Like it don't even... Uh-uh. It don't it don't have a it don't have a real feeling to it and that's another reason why I I, I said I like the um XXX album I like the seventeen album that he did because like the sounds on there felt more authentic on top mm-hmm. of you know what I'm saying on top of what mm-hmm. he was saying and I'm mm-hmm. like you know yeah I mean he obviously going through some things but it it, it didn't feel so robotic like I could sit there and be like you know this yeah. is a real person I'm listening to and see that's what. You and I, like, that's how I connected to Vic Mensa's album. I felt like I was listening to an actual being. It's the same thing. Like, that's Mm. the reason why I loved it. Because I felt like I'm listening to an actual person. Like, so, Ant didn't do it. But me and Aaron listened to fucking ASAP Mob this week. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I was in enough pain on my own. We tried to do that shit. Like, we, I had to, first of all, I I had to fucking fortify myself. 
with all that shit I was listening to beforehand to cushion the blow. And then that's I why. actually that's played why we say fuck your uninformed opinion. Yeah, uh-huh. we <laughs> we listen to this crazy shit on the show too, just to say we to did it. We put You're ourselves welcome. through the this is, You're welcome. <laughs> Yo, I can't fucking <laughs> fucking ace that my cozy tapes volume two. Oh like there's a song on there called like. What was it called? Like, shut the fuck up. And I was like, but they won't do it. Why won't they do it? <laughs> oh, really? It was fucking horrible. It's like, it sounds like a bunch of, like, non sentient, angry ass slave bots made this shit. That's, this thing that, that's really how it was sounding. What's this thing called? I'll, I'll go listen to it, I guess. What's this thing called? <laughs> it's, called the cozy, it's called The Cozy Tapes Volume 2. Is it on Google Music? Yes, it's on Google yeah, Music. Just, yeah, just it's on there. Skip uh, yeah, on volume there. one. Don't even subject yourself to volume one. Just go straight to volume two. It just, is the subtitle yeah. really too cozy? Yeah. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, the oh song. My the song. God. The subtitle the song. is called Too Cozy. It's cozy. called Please Shut Up. Too cozy. Please it's shut called up. Please Shut Up. And I and but but they wouldn't. <laughs> They would. I'm telling y'all, this is what they play the slave drones to make sure they don't fucking revolt. Oh, this, like, and, and it's good. not even really actual music. It just sounds like a series of beeps and clicks. It's like I don't even understand what was happening. I don't understand. I don't understand how they call this shit actual music. Well, they got Joey Badass on it. What does that mean? Um, right, <laughs> right. What does that mean? <laughs> Everybody qualified shit when Joey Badass comes in the room. It's like, but Joey Badass is there. That's another, th- that's another thing. That's another thing we gotta talk about with these culture vultures. Like they quick to attach some shit. Like it'll be like, it'll be like um, a, a picture with designer. Designer taking a picture with DJ Premier. So then it's like, oh, yep. well, you know, how y'all gonna hate on that? Well, he hip hop because he would be. And it's like, what Premier's the fuck is that supposed to mean? What that supposed Nothing. to mean? Like, <laughs> This is a photo op. It's like, right. uh, look, we, I mean, we fucking happen to to dig, it's like semi dig 444, but everybody, like, that was part of the argument. Like, but no, I did it all the beats. So it was, then it was like, oh. <laughs> right, right, exactly. That kind of shit. <laughs> Damn it. It's like, it's like, oh, you head shut up. <laughs> Your favorite producer is here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> I hate, I hate that shit. I hate that shit with a passion. Yeah, the same thing. The... Is... Go ahead, Aaron. No, I was gonna say the same thing is um happening now with this whole Nicki Minaj and Nas thing. No, yeah. please don't make me start. Please don't make Nikki... me start. <laughs> Nicki next. <laughs> Nicki next album will be all bars. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> if I hear anything but the consistent garbage I've been hearing on a Nicki album. I call oh. Whitaker on that shit. She's gonna be some old <laughs> I gave you power type shit. No! Hey yo, hey yo. <laughs> about, about lips about lip gloss. Oh, you dare <laughs> blasting me. I just dare blasting. Watch. I'm waiting for it. Waiting. I can't believe you just attached Nicki Minaj to I gave you power and say fucking threat. Get out of here with that shit. Hey yo. It's coming. It's coming. I called it. No! <laughs> Turn on the beats and clicks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather hear that stupid shit than what you just described. I can't. But see, that's the problem. That's what why these fucking cultures can vulture because then you got some little sliver of a cosign from something yeah. that's legitimate in hip hop. Now, well, I'm legit now. Joey Badass <laughs> is on my car. I'm legit now. <laughs> Kendrick hopped on my verse at the end. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, and it was crazy. Like you people like get a shout out from Lil B. <laughs> right? Really? What? Wait a minute! What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! What? Dude, when does little B like legitimizing yourself? I was like, what? I was like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> yo. Yo, yo, did you, did you culture vulture us and on the show right now? 
You just called your vulture and I'm like, I can't. I think I know what he's talking about. That's funny though, man. Oh, shit. I think I know what he's talking about. He's talking about that Lonzo ball shit. No, I'm the fuck that shit. That nigga tripping. But yeah, I'm. Just, I was just using little B. No, he was just talking about little B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I thought you was talking about his response. I thought you was talking about his response to uh, Lonzo Ball on that Nas shit. I ain't even che- check what he said to that. I was trying to. Yeah, apparently, to apparently, uh, Lil B and Ti responded to him. I heard. Yeah, I didn't hear what they said. I didn't anything. read it. Certain people are not allowed to legitimize you anymore, though, because they've gotten, because they've been caught into questionable, yeah, questionable mode. Right. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about with Joey Badass. Like he's still on trial. Yeah. For me. Like I don't. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't. He don't Mm-mm. necessarily get that stamp of approval. I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that your shit is 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 lit right just because Kendrick is on it either. I love Kendrick, like, but nah. Right. Exactly. Oh. Like. Yeah, I don't fuck with I don't I don't fuck with your shit just because Kendrick on it. The shit still nah. gotta be good. <laughs> yep. Mm-mm. And I mean, Kendrick has been on some shit that I find questionable. Such as. And, he, and it, I mean, his ass is good on it, but then that's only mean I'm like, oh yeah, your shit is great. Not yeah. not great. Like, hasn't he done some shit with Migos? He did some shit with him. Ah, M is different. I'm not. I'm not. He out shady, shady. He out shady, shady. I guess. But like, like, I don't. Like, <laughs> I mean, you can hop on some Jeezy shit, or you can hop on some, you know, Migo shit, or you can hop on some Little Wayne shit. And Kendrick has been on some shit with Little Wayne and Drake. I think, That's not I think gonna I make you be like, oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, it just depends on. I, I, I said, I talked about it before too. Um, um. Like it just depends on how it's done too. Like I like yeah. it depends on that's it depends on who's like, doing it. Like it gives you a pass. But he's very good at what he do. It depends on who it is. Uh, and how they do it. I just don't like what he does. Are you saying not, that Jeezy does the wrong right? Uh, I think, is, I think he, so. I think so. He poor he a poor man T.I. I don't I don't really like <laughs> it. <either>. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm good on that. You know what? Your ass has been dragging Ti for years, though, Aaron. No, I, I, I like Ti. Yeah, like that was me. I, I, I can't. I, I mess with Ti. That's Anthony right. hating on Ti. Oh, okay. I'm hating. I'm hating. Broadway. I'm just cool. Broadway. Broadway. I, I forgot. I, I always get confused about which one of you like doesn't doesn't really fuck with certain things sometimes like like one of you doesn't fuck with like naughty by nature like that and i can't remember which one it is i like naughty but i wouldn't say i fuck with him like that no nah, i never had a problem with naughty nah, i don't have a problem with him either but you know i know but like one of you like really lo- i think aaron is the one that loved him and you were like eh <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> right. Yeah, you got man, you got to dig back into some naughty oh, man. I like that's naughty. What, I like I like naughty. Yeah. I listen to it, and I haven't listened to him in a while. I might go back now. And they straight from the native tongues family, so I mean, I like naughty. I don't have a problem with naughty. I, I really, on. I really like, um, I really like right done wrong. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, you know, I like, like Red Cafe, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many instances of right done Shake wrong. Down. We, just, we, just, we just gotta get. What is with you today? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. There's so I mean, there's so many instances of like sheer ignorance that are just like funny. Like, like my boy, like Cameron. Cameron yeah. is so wrong. Like, there's nothing right about Cameron. He's so Cameron wrong. Is on y'all list like that? I mean, he's funny, but he's not oh. like high up on my list. But I mean, he's 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 comical. He can spit a little bit. He's, he's funny. entertaining. He's entertaining. He is definitely but influential. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to call him a vulture. I wouldn't call him a vulture. But see, that's my point. There's a way to be ignorant and not be a fucking vulture. See, but all right, you say you say you don't count him as a vulture, but like, it's people that like. That that would count. That would put Cameron in the same vein as you know, um, as like 
uh, that that street that street hustler who authentic because you know blase blase blah whatever type of um, street dealings they got and all that type of stuff. That's true. I see what you're saying, Aaron. But but you got to remember too that that there was a time when despite whether or not you were a street hustler or not, you still wanted to maintain a certain level of perfection in the game right. and in the, in the culture. So you still had shit to uphold as far as you were concerned. People would still call you full of shit if you couldn't fit. They wouldn't big up you just because you was a street hustler, but you ain't what, but, but you couldn't say shit. Like you wouldn't get a Twenty One Savage back then. Right. See, that's what. That see, shit but that's. Happen. But that's another. That's another form of vulture. Um, that we talked about before too. That like, you know, they feel like um. That that particular rap music is real. What real, real hip hop is, or what real rap is, because well, that's, that's another you those, know, issue. Yeah, because those people had those authentic stories behind them, or whatever. I see what you're saying. You know, like, mm-hmm. like I even though whether they, yeah, it's like whether they can rap or not. It's like you know, he he allowed to say it. Like Gucci, Gucci can say it. You know what I'm saying? So see, I, don't, I don't care I don't if he like, can rap or not. I, I, like Gucci man, don't get a task in my mind either, because like his. He's not on a level where, you know, where he's bringing it that I'm just going to excuse that shit. Like, somebody like Biggie, I will excuse that shit. Uh-huh. Right. I always see, and that was another issue we had with um, Puffy. <laughs> because... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because um, I feel like he used the fact that, you know, um, that, that, you know, real like real people of the culture or you know real fans of the culture would take to Biggie because he you know what I'm saying he could actually rap yeah. it's not just somebody it's not just somebody who you know that's like low level as we yeah. would say mm-hmm. you know and they come into the game just like you know these type of uh, the uh, tactics over over that over this you know what I'm saying this lyricism that Biggie bringing y'all and you just want to stick with what it is. I mean, I we've always talked about El Diablo, um, <laughs> and we know that a lot of like he's the number one culprit. Like, if we had to pick somebody, like that, that's that's pretty much where you have to start. And because he's done so many things that are just like not only what you're saying right there did he do, Aaron. He also like we talked about him taking hits from the eighties, yeah, yeah. Because what he did was it, it's it's an art form when you take these obscure songs and make these beats out of them and then you make everybody go like it's it's really, really more of a challenge and a feat for digital underground to use Let's Play House to make Humpty Dance. Who the fuck knows Let's Play House anymore? Like, nobody. Okay, so somebody is coming to bring something that people haven't heard or never heard or haven't heard in a long time or almost never heard, and they're flipping it, and you're, like, making this huge, you know, creation that's popular, and it's like, oh, my God, everybody loves it. Where Puffy started out with songs that were already fucking popping. Like, that shit is lazy. Yeah, it is. And nobody in like um I feel like a lot of people were just like, you know, people that knew better anyway, um, were just like, Why would he do that? You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, if you got if if you somebody that's like considered like legitimate, um, like um Biggie or Craig Mack or um I wanna I wanna say Mace, because at the time he was still murder Mace, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like if you got people that's considered legitimate, you know what I'm saying, that's helping you um, push this type of narrative, then, you know, uh, a lot of people, I think a lot of people just like, you know, just took it for what it was, you know what I'm saying, just like let it slide or whatever because of that. Well, it was because that shit, it started to pop and it was, I'm not saying we never used songs that were popular, I'm saying 
that shit, it, it wasn't the fucking norm. It's not what we did all the time. Right. It, I mean, it was the basis of what it started out as, like, you know, with your boy Rich Nichols clowning on um, Rapper's Delight, because that song was definitely popular. That was a, you know, a chic song, good times. But, but the, the more and more we moved away from that and started moving towards the shit that we started doing, which was, you know, like what they call digging in the crate and really coming up with shit and really deconstructing these songs and then reconstructing them. That's when we started having a real strong art art form. You know? Yeah. Take like stripping that shit away is it, taking it in the in the other direction and that's when this fucking pop shit filtered in and then, you know, Nelly and <laughs> and <laughs> you know, whatever other sing songy rapper, oh, you know, Jeffrey. God. Right. Jeffrey. Oh, but see, it, that, and, but that I feel like that's the same conversation we having about, you know, people that just like nowadays they just like, you know, either they do a song with somebody that we consider legitimate or mm-hmm. they, just, they just taking pictures with somebody we consider legitimate and they you know what I'm saying they they phoning it in. And that's the same thing. That's the same thing that um, Puffy was doing. That's the way I see it, anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he took somebody like Big who can actually rap. <laughs> oh my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I said this was gonna be a button pushing episode. Yeah, it's getting his money's worth tonight. Well, you know, if you're talking about culture vultures, what would you say? You he was a panda or I think he's both. <laughs> because, because, and like now, and he, now he has the nerve to be out there. Because we, we talked about this before. He had the nerve to be out there talking about people destroying hip hop. And you're like, really? Oh yeah, yeah, I've mm-hmm. seen that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he said really? even I had my limits. No, you didn't. <laughs> That's what he Not really. I mean, did he have? I mean, I I don't know. I don't think so. You know, I, like I that. Think, I don't think so either. But I mean, I haven't. Nope. I'm not that dark that I can imagine the next step in motorism though. To say that Puffy won't do it. You know what? I don't know. I, I'm not that dark either, personally. But I really feel like. Um, Maybe he's just like a good actor, cause sometimes you like you watch him and he seems like like he's not as dark as you think he is. Mm. Then I'm looking to see if his lips are moving. Like maybe, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, are you trying to convince me that you want to fall? And sometimes I've seen him in interviews where he is just high or drunk as fuck. And he's just talking crazy. I'm like, yeah, I think, yeah, I think one of the uh, last interviews I seen him in was um, on the Breakfast Club. He looked pretty, yeah, he looked pretty on. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like most of the new interviews I've seen him on, he used to like I've seen. There was one episode I saw him on when he was doing Dirty Money. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and it was him and the, the the chicks from Dirty Money, which I like Dirty Money, but. It was him and those two, and Chelsea Handler was interviewing him, and he was just, he was south. And he was just talking about how he wants to be in love, and he was mm-hmm. like, you think I don't want to be in love? He's like, I want somebody to love me. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, Puffy, like, you, like you, you've done this shit for years and years i'm like is he now feeling some kind of remorse that's where i feel like where jay is too it's like you've done this dirt for years and now you want somebody to absolve you you want somebody to give you two hail marys and throw some holy water on you and tell you to hold a rosary like Mm -hmm. yeah but you know you know why i feel like you know why i feel like um i don't i don't see a lot of um like remorse when it come to him except when he's drunk (laughs) <laughs> yeah, me. I think that's yeah. That's probably the, that's probably the only way you see it. 
<laughs> but like the reason I don't the reason I don't see a lot of, I don't see a lot of remorse when it comes to him is like for example like you more liable to see um somebody like him in uh uh doing an interview whereas like how often you see Jay Z doing interviews how often you see Dr Dre doing interviews because I feel like they genuinely just can't you know what I'm saying they don't want to show their faces anymore they just like the damage is done and I feel bad already. I was talking about the defiant <laughs> ones with, with Aunt earlier I was like. Dre seems genuinely disgusted by himself, by the shit mm-hmm. that he's done. Right. Yeah, he does. Like, like sometimes when he would say things, I look on his face like, I can't believe I'm sitting here telling you I did this shit. Yeah. See, but that that's a yeah that's that's where like you know puppy. <laughs> he a little. Yeah. <laughs> he, he a little different. Um, in that regard to me because um, you'll still see him doing like regular interviews whereas though like it take it takes something for like the defiant one to see Dre you know what I'm saying it take it yeah. take like a you know what I'm saying you don't you're not gonna get Dre or Jay Z or you know what I'm saying even now so like you see people like J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar they don't really see their faces um, they don't do a lot of interviews, no. Right, they don't. They don't really. You know what I'm saying. And Jay you know, is kind of out and about now because 444 is out, and he's like, he's doing his interviews and he's saying things, and you're like, really? Right, but it's still done. It's still done in a co- more controlled way. It's not like Very you know, true. I'm, it's not like oh, I'm on the Breakfast Club, I'm on Hot 97, and I'm here because I'm promoting this and whatever, whatever. Like Puffy don't have to do that anymore. Right. Well, his ass is messy. He's always messy. I can't remember yeah. a time when when he you know hasn't he's he's just messy he's he's problematic he's always been problematic yeah apparently you know I mean like like we've discussed yeah. this before yeah, like yeah, when everybody me. who's come into contact with you has either died or or gone gone over to Jesus or some form of Jesus yeah that's that shit ain't normal he's not El Diablo for nothing Craig Craig Max in a cult. <laughs> um, like uh, what shines a Hasidic Jew or some shit? I think I think he done switched up again. Loon, <laughs> Loon is Loon is, 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 is in the fucking nation. Biggie's passed yeah. on. Yeah, that whole yeah that whole situation is just somebody. Yeah, fun, I home. mean, somebody find find Black Rob. I don't even know where Black Rob is at. Is he in hiding? I don't know. Who Thank knows? God the locks got away. Hey, hey, hey. By the, by the, by the skin of their by hair. By the skin of their hair. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little Tim. Poor little they not, Tim. They not, they not all bald anymore. I seen a picture with Kiss. He got his hair back and shit. Kiss had hair on his <laughs> chin. You said he has hair hair. What? He had hair, he had hair on his drink chin. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay. yeah, he was on there? He was on there with uh, Lil C. Oh, oh shit. Looking dusty in a motherfucker, no doubt. Uh, I know. You know, yo. You know, you know oh. you ain't shit with men. When Lil' Kim dissing you. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> it was an interesting episode, though. You know, check it out. That's yeah, I'm going yeah, to watch that. That's horrible. Yeah. So, Lil' <laughs> Kim was on his top. Huh? What? About what? What did she say? Um, she said she called Lil C. She called him all types of snitches and bitches. This and oh, all that's that. right. She, I remember that. Yeah, back on that uh that mic that got five. That's the that's the only reason I listened to that album too. Um, uh, damn, what's the name of it? <laughs> um, no, it got man. five. The one that got five mics in the store. Uh, Lil Kim Jones. Uh, I about the, the one where he got know what yeah, yeah. about. Was yeah, it, is it yeah. Belladonna? Is it Bell? No, it's nah, it wasn't Donna. Belladonna. It was the one pushing lighters Donna. up on there. I think it was. Yeah, yeah it's, it's something Donna. Something. It's not Belladonna. Hold on. I remember I'll that one. Yeah, I remember that one. Cause I was in yeah. Philly by that time, and like they was bumping the shit out of that, like all mm-hmm. the time. It wasn't bad, but it reeks of Ghost Riders so. though. <laughs> I wasn't really feeling well, that single. I'm gonna I'm gonna ease back off little Kim post post Biggie dying. I don't think she's been right since Biggie's death. Yeah. Yeah. So, um uh Risa. So Aaron wanted that's, to... the, that's second period. 
Yes, it is. Who's recess, Aaron? Um, oh, yeah. Before we get into recess, it was the Naked Truth. That was the one. Okay. Yeah, that was the one. But, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, our, our boy, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the one and only. Yay. Uh, uh, Miss Mitch, number one favorite conscious MC of all time. <laughs> the only baby we The only baby we acknowledge. <laughs> yeah. No, salon. <laughs> the mighty most deaf. Yay, AK okay, was Yes and Bay. Yes and Bay. Yeah, I don't like calling him that, but it is what it is. It is what it well, is. His mama his named Clay. I'ma call him Clay. Mama, his mama did not, His mama named his ass Dante. What are you talking about? Dante. Dante. Yeah, I'm, but his real name. Yeah, I'm. I'm good with that. I'ma call him Dante if I ever run into him. So, oh no. <laughs> he locked with a slap you or some shit. Probably. Yo, he do. Yo, I, I'm not gonna front like um the the part, the reason I bring him up for re- recess is because of that Hot 97 interview. But um before I get into that, like he did look a little he looked a little troubled in that interview. Um, a little troubled. Yeah, he looked troubled. Like I don't know what it was. You know, he just seemed a little. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, you know, he he been through some things. I mean, he actually has though. It's been a while since we've seen Mr. Bay. And shit, yeah. we all been through some things. He looked like he's stressed out like a lot of the rest of us. Like, yeah. I can't believe Orange Hitler is my fucking president. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Fucking racist ass tiki torches. Like, we all right. look stressed out right now. <laughs> I mean, the people that I think, it, you know what I think it is? I think it's the people that know better that, that are stressed out. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's a. It's the people that's just, you know, living life and, you know, just carrying on regular that scared me. They don't like, give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> just like, mm. but, um, yeah, um, he, he said something on that, in that particular interview that stood out to me. He was talking about, um, how, um, well, he was talking to, uh, uh, what's his name? Ebro. He was talking to Ebro. Ebro. Yeah. And, um, Ebro was asking him, um, about the whole movie thing and, you know, uh-huh. you know, you know what? What's the next movie he gonna do? Why he hasn't been doing um, movies lately, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And, um, most were saying like uh, he he been getting scripts or whatever, but you know the scripts don't feel right, and he feel like you know if the if the scripts don't feel right, and he feel like um, he not he not gonna be surrounded by the type of people where you know um, where he can appreciate the experience. Of mm-hmm. doing of doing that movie because he was explaining that when you do a movie you out there for like five six months at a time filming or whatever mm-hmm. and you out mm-hmm. there you with the you with these people most of your time so yeah. hundreds um, of people there's hundreds of people involved he would right and he was saying like you know um just like you know some of the movies he's done like he has like the experiences to fall back on where you know he's still fulfilled in that particular experience of doing. The movie with those people, and a lot of times, um, people justify people people justify um, the end of the means with money a lot of time, and it's just like, well, yep. if, it, if if you getting that check, then why not just do that movie? And he said that's not enough for him. Like it gotta be, you know, um, it gotta be an ex- it gotta be an experience that he feel good about, and he not on set with people that he don't. He don't feel comfortable with, and that mm-hmm. type of thing. And Let's see, he's what he said, um, right? Yeah, that's yeah, which is why he's here. But um, um, what he said that really stood out to me is that um, it reflects in the way that we spend our money, how you made your money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of a lot of times, people, what we do is we we buy um stuff. Like, say you work in a job that you really not feeling or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You're just trying to get that check. And by the time you get your check, you're just like, all right, I'm going to reward myself because I don't feel rewarded or I don't feel fulfilled um, at this particular job or, you know, whatever the case, whatever you're doing, you know what I'm saying? It don't even have to be a regular job. It could be, you know, whatever. Um, however you got your money and you don't feel fulfilled in it, you want to buy something to fill that void. And, um, 
it, it just made so much sense to me when he said that, you know, because I feel like a lot of people um, deal with that and go through that. But, you know, it's something that we don't talk about a lot of times. Well, no, it's definitely, it's 100% dead on because that's mm-hmm. what we're talking about every time we talk about people that pander. And, and right. how they're talking about just getting money, getting money, getting money, getting money. But if getting money is your only goal, once you get it now, where are you? Where's the next right. thing? Like, where are you? Yeah. What is your goal now? Right, right. Yeah, like, I, I hear people That's say it all the what time. Like, now? I hear people say it all the time, especially, like, when um I used to be at work back in Philly. And people would be like, um, you know, I don't work all these hours for nothing. I'm going to reward myself. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's it's always something it's always something trivial a lot of times. Like we don't like when you in that state of mind, like a lot of times you're not thinking about what you're spending your money on. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's just going to whatever, you know, like I said, can fill that void at that point in time, whether it's, you know, some jewelry, whether it's liquor, whatever your vice is. You know what I'm right. saying? Um in a bag. <laughs> right, yeah. So But um, I mean in essence what you're doing is you're just you're throwing money down a big open gaping hole mm-hmm. yeah unfortunately yeah but i just, I just thought it, that was you know, we don't want to thought that was dope sound like we're so fucking deep and all that kind of stuff but fuck you we are deep okay so <laughs> there you go yeah yeah i just i mean I, I felt that you know what i'm saying when he said that it was just like you know like i said it made it so much needs sense to mean something it needs to like you Things need to mean things, and it, you need to have more. You need to have something that's feeding your soul. Right. And okay, first you need to have a soul, <laughs> and then you need to have something that's feeding your soul. Okay, if you don't have a soul, you need to work on why, and you need to figure out because, again, that's that's just a problem. Cause then, yeah. if you don't, what the fuck is your end goal? Money right. can never be your end goal. That's not gonna take you anywhere. It doesn't. It doesn't. It can be a means to your end goal, but it can't be your end goal. Right. Not that type of was was crazy. Was crazy. That type of mentality always resonated with me though. Like um, I remember watching years ago. I was watching um, uh, one of Damon Wayne's last stand up Jones, and he was saying um the same thing basically. He was like. This is gonna be my last show, and um, you know, everybody in the audience was like, "Oh, whatever, whatever." So, he, yeah. So he was like, "Um, the reason um I'm saying that though is because I realize now I'm doing it for the money, and that's that's not sitting right with me." You know what I'm saying? Like when you when you get to the point where you feel like you're just doing it for the money, like you know, Mm-mm. you probably yeah. shouldn't be doing it. It's time to stop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, like look at Dave Chappelle. He was like, he he set a marker for himself. And, and he turned away from money because when he set that marker and he realized he had hit it, he was like, mm-mm, it's, it's time to go. Right. Yeah. Can't do it that's, anymore because that's, cause it, that's some that deep shit. Integrity. It takes yeah. low, because he turned his back on multi-millions. Mm-hmm. Do you know what kind of person you have to be? And that's a test of your character. Right. And you actually come out on the other side of that. You can feel good about the person that you are. Right. Right. And you know you know what's crazy? Like, um like when you think about when you think about the way he did that. Um, cause I was thinking about this recently too. Like, would the would the Chappelle show be held as in high regard as it is now if it didn't do that? No. <laughs> right. I was thinking about that. Yeah, it probably would have bottomed out quickly. It would have. It would have tarnished the legacy. That would have hurt his career too. Yep. But people don't think about that kind of stuff either. All they think about is just getting all that, getting I'm gonna get my get all this money. Right. That that say something. Low burn is so much better. It's so much. Better. I think I think that type of mentality says something more so about us as a society than anything. Like the fact that you know you get you get shunned or you know what I'm saying you get like people talk down about you because oh you turned away 
all this all this money you know what i'm saying and it's like mm-hmm. how bad right like that's that's not helping my my well-being like we just got done talking about mental mental health you know what i'm saying yeah. like i'm trying to i'm trying to live healthy like you know i got this is dave Chappelle. you know what i'm saying he got enough money to be comfortable with it he gonna keep coming with content um comfortable he had way <laughs> more than comfortable money right you see but that's what that's what i'm saying so it's like it's yeah. like why you know why you want you know what i'm saying like the why is because if you're if you don't have any other goal if you don't have a soul it's just more money that you keep throwing down an empty gaping hole that you are mm-hmm. trying to there's nothing in there you're trying to fill it with money you can't and you're never going to be able to fill it because money yeah. is not going to do it. But people who are are geared up and wired that way, if you have some issue with your life, like like Future was talking about on that video we were watching, how he grew up and how it, people who grew up a little bit differently. If you grew up, it's not just not having money. People grew up poor, but they still have value. Mm-hmm. It's if you kind of grew up in the gutter with no value. Whatsoever. You know, because gutter does not necessarily mean zero value, it just doesn't. There are plenty of people who, like, I mean, look at um, Viola Davis. They were dirt poor, but they have strong values in their house. Not about not having the money, it's about what kind of values you have along with that money or not having money. That's why I always hate that whole argument about, you know, well, I, I grew up poor and that's the reason why. No, you grew up poor probably with gutter ass values is what happened. Spiritually poor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you can grow up with money and have gutter ass values. Look at the cartoon. Yeah. Right. But you got you got you got these um vultures out here like Vlad that are say shit like that. Like they'll really be on some type of But a lot like, of people uh, say that shit. But that's one of the things I would definitely give to Bill Cosby. Yeah. I know everybody not, hates not, that, but yeah, not just not just the part about being poor, but the um like like these gutter values that you're talking about, it's them it's them along it's them along the lines of conversations uh where people are like, Well, if I don't like, for example, um, I think uh, when when Lord Jamar calls him out on being a culture vulture, he said something about, well, um, if I don't do it, you know, what I'm saying somebody else going to do it, you know, no. so I might as well, I might as well just do it and get the money. And I feel like that's a that's the attitude of a lot of these cats. Like Jay Z, I feel like he the same way. He say it in his music sometimes too. But you know only somebody who is gutter will think like that. Mm. Because in my mind, it's like this. I don't give a shit what somebody else is doing. It's up to me to decide what my character is. I define who I am. I define what my character is. I define and say who I'm going to be and who I'm not going to be. And if I say I'm not going to do it, I can give a shit what a hundred motherfuckers are going to do. I'm not going to do it. Fuck you. (laughs) Round of applause, please. Oh, okay. (laughs) Why not? You determine who you're going to be. Not everybody else. Not anybody else. And nobody else has to shit with what you eat but you. Right. So that that's, that's a bunch of bullshit when people say crap like that. So... Yo, that was a good ass show today, guys. <laughs> we had a couple of technical difficulties. And it's, um, coffee zone. We had a couple of times when Aunt made us go, what? <laughs> Shots a little bit. Shots a little bit. No, no. <laughs> I feel like little B is gonna be like, like years from now, he's gonna be like when people go, oh yeah, like remember little Zane? Like he's gonna be like the little Zane of now. Like what? That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, like nobody fucking remembers who little Zane is, and nobody's gonna remember who little B is either. They're gonna be like little what? Or Youngberg, or, or Jaquan. Exactly, <laughs> or Youngberg. Man, my man said Jaquan. Yep. 
<laughs> I actually kind of remember Jaquan a little bit. Everybody in the club get Everybody tipsy. Everybody in the club get yeah. tipsy. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, shit gonna, that shit gonna be like, you remember that Young Bird song? Everybody in the club like, get tipsy. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, like, nobody even remembers Loon. I was talking about Loon and somebody was like, what the fuck did he make? <laughs> And I was like, I barely remember. I barely remember. Yeah, exactly. I was like, he was only the girl part five. Um, that's the only. <laughs> that's the only song I remember. <laughs> Blue had a couple jokes. He had a couple jokes. He had this one song that came on the other day when I was when I was right because I, I have serious radio, and it came on fly on the fly station, and I was like, yo, that's Loon. And I can't remember the name of this song right now. But uh, so homework for next week. Next week is probably gonna be one of my favorite shows. It's the the rappers who sing, singers who rap, sing songy rappers episode. <laughs> Are we gonna type all that out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you're asking yourself right now, what in the hell is that? Well, there are singers who rap, there are rappers who sing, mm -hmm. and there are sing songy ass rappers. Mm -hmm. Who we keep categorizing as rappers, and they never rap a lyric in their lives. And they can't yeah, they sing. Really, they really, they really not. And they have been pulling the wool over your eyes for several generations. Oh, I mean, I, I don't getting, know how. Yeah, it's getting hard to tell the difference anymore nowadays. Hey, there's no, no difference anymore. No, but you still anymore. know. But you still really do know because when they go and categorize that shit, I feel like, oh, he's the biggest thing in hip hop. I'm like, he, what the fuck? It, what if he rap? <laughs> <laughs> like, when have you all ever heard Nelly rap a lyric? <laughs> <laughs> he was singing on that quality joke. He sings on every John, and <laughs> name a name a song. I can't think of a song right now where that where Nelly has not badly sung his way through every line. He, so he, he got to uh, gotta admit number one was close. He he bell bibbed the he bell bibbed <laughs> the vo his way through it. Number one was close. I can't stand you right now, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that, that Joe Button just had me cracking up when he said that he was telling that Drake. He said, you can't bell bib the way you uh, build, uh, bell bib the way, your way out of this one. I was cracking the fuck up. Oh, Jesus Christ. That shit is hilarious, though. That's funny. <laughs> I was mad at Joe Button for that. That shit wasn't necessary. I like Why? that one, though. Because Drake not a rapper. Uh, no, and see, stay tuned for the next start. episode, folks. Right. In school. And Drake is a rapper who sings. He does it badly, but he still does it. I don't know. I feel like he's a singer that you've raps. Actually, you know, you've actually heard Drake spit. He spits more. He used to spit more than he sang. He used to. Jizzy Marley got me all confused. What? <laughs> okay, look at like look at somebody like Missy. Same thing. Is Missy a rapper? Missy's a rapper who sings. Yeah. And as Aaron said, tune in. I feel like Missy is a early MC though. Like oh, Missy would have been at the party. Really well, Missy would have okay. been at the party with Cool That Hurt. might be true. That might be yeah, true. I mean. That might be true. Cause, cause I feel the wind five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is uh -huh. really not <laughs> <laughs> not that profound at all. But it gets the party going. It definitely it moves the, the crowd. Party. It gets the party started every time. Cause like I, I used to ridicule the shit out of her back in the day. But you throw one, I can't stand the rain. Everybody's on the fucking dance floor, like. <laughs> right. Exactly. Let's save the good stuff for next week. Yeah, we're we're it's. It's a process. And uh, you know what, though? You know what? I'm going to reveal this next week. Like, talking to my boy, and I'm thinking, I was like, oh, it started here. He was like, no, it started right here. And I was like, boom! Like Homer Simpson style. <laughs> and I felt bad because the person who who it started with isn't somebody who you would not, who, who we didn't not like. And I was mm. like, 
but and I, I but you cannot point to him and say that that shit is suspect. It is right. Stay tuned. I'm thinking now. Who are we talking about? Yep. <laughs> Stay tuned. But that is the show. The school is officially out. There's it's no more Game of Thrones for us to watch. It's Kane, ain't it? It's Rakim. It's Kane. It's Kane. Not Kane. Nope. <laughs> nope. Am I close?